Today, I'm going to teach an AI to make art, a lot of art. In fact, all of the images you're seeing right now were created by an AI. We're going to use three levels of art generation, deep dreaming, narrow style transfer, and stable diffusion. Each of them produces very different but amazing results. Let's start with level one, deep dreaming. This technique can be used to generate very interesting and psychedelic art. The way it works is that we can grab whatever random image we want and then tell the AI to dream. And then we get a completely different and more artistic image. We do this through convolutional neural nets. So for example, we use a CNN that classifies image of dogs. Then we pass this random image of some clouds through the model. We tell it to stop at a certain layer and then amplify the dogs in that image. And boom, this is what you get. And the cool thing is that the results you get depend on the layer you choose. For example, I have this beautiful image of the Great Barrier of Reef. Then I tell the model to dream using one of the first layers. And this is what I get. As you can see, the AI picked up on simple patterns like circles and waves. However, if I choose a deeper layer in the model, I get this, which as you can see has more complex patterns and structures. So the deeper you go, the more complex and intricate the patterns get. You can also change how many dogs you want the model to amplify and how big the dogs are. So for example, if I change the size to a very low number, I get an image that is very similar to my original. But as I increase this number, the patterns get bigger and bigger until at one point it just goes bananas. I also can change how many dogs I want the model to amplify. And as I increase this number, the more dog-like patterns will appear. Until now, I have been using a model trained on ImageNet, which is a dataset of thousands of images of dogs and other animals. That's why in some of the images the model generated, you can literally see dogs. And is this a snake, maybe? But what happens if I use a model trained on other datasets? Well, then I get completely different patterns and results. If we take a model trained on the dataset Places 365 and we take the same images as before, we get this, which is so cool. I can also go a bit crazy with the parameters and then I get this image, which I have to admit is one of my favorites. I also tried deep dreaming with different images. For example, this image of the Golden State Bridge turned into this. And if I use the ImageNet model, I get this. I also tried using an image from Mount Everest and this is what I got. You can see the model trying to amplify patterns of some sort of buildings and towers. But what happens if I take a generated deep dream image and I tell the model to perform deep dreaming on that image? And then I do this again and again and again until I get this little movie that looks like this. The way this works is that I'm zooming a little bit into the image every time I get a new one. That's why I get this cooling zooming effect. I can also zoom and rotate at the same time. And if I use the ImageNet model, I get this, which is even more trippy. Okay, it's time to move to level two, neural style transfer. This basically consists of taking a painting and an image and trying to produce an image with the style of the painting. I won't get into the details, but this works by calculating the difference between the input image and the style image and between the input image and the content image and then trying to minimize both distances until you get something like this. So I then got a bunch of images from the internet and then I got this painting. This is the Starry Night by Vincent van Gogh. I then applied neural cell transfer and these are the results I got. To be honest, I think it looks quite cool. You can see that it's painting the same images with the color scheme of the original painting. I also tried generating the images with the same style, but maintaining the colors of the original image. And the results are pretty cool as well. I can also use different paintings. So I used this painting by Francis Picabia and this mosaic painting. You can see that it sticks pretty well to the painting style and it even creates this mosaic-like patterns. And as you know, a movie is just a bunch of images put together one after another. So if we take the frames of a video and apply neural style transfer to each of them, we get something like this. This is the first ever video uploaded to YouTube in the style of the Great Wave by Hokusai. This was my implementation of this. And as you can see, it, it's, it's not great. It has these random frames where it creates basically just a bunch of noise. So as any good programmer would do, I search around the internet for someone else's code. Eventually, I found this GitHub repository called Fast Neural Style PyTorch by RR Mina, and it produces some very nice results. 
So now we can all enjoy this video in six different styles. I also tried using this very famous video and the results are not too bad either. Finally, let's move over to level three, stable diffusion. This is mind blowing. You can write something like frog riding a bike and it gives you exactly that. This is extremely complicated to do and works by taking advantage of generative adversarial networks. You have to train it with billions of images and it costs a lot of money. Luckily, there's an open source library that's really easy to use. So yeah, I'll, I'll be using that. And you might be saying, big whoop, I can do this myself by going to DALI2, which is basically the same thing, and getting my images. And you might be right, but DALI2 only gives you four images at a time. Meanwhile, I can go crazy and say, please give me a hundred images of a panda playing the piano. And my code will do just that. I can also say, give me a hundred images of Rick and Morty. Or even give me 100 images of a painting of an astronaut riding a horse. I also have more control over the image generation process. For example, I can set how much effort I want the model to apply to the image by changing the number of inference steps. And I can even change how much I want the AI to stick to what I wrote by changing the guidance scale. I got some other cool images with this model. This is what I got when I wrote City in the Skies. Pretty cool, right? I also found that images involving galaxies or the universe tended to be the most beautiful. I mean, just look, it doesn't get much better than this. I also tried something that blew my mind. Inside the stable diffusion repository, there's this script called image to image that by. You give it a text prompt like a fantasy landscape trending on art station, and you then give it a rough drawing of what you want the image to be. It doesn't have to be anything crazy, just a simple drawing. You execute the script and it just does magic. It produces this amazing stable diffusion images that follow the drawing you just made, but do it a million times better. I just show you the example they give on the repo, but let's hop over to Photoshop and draw some images. I'm going to start by drawing some mountains and a river. Don't judge my drawing skills, okay? I'm then going to attempt to draw the underwater city of Atlantis. I know, I know, it looks like a three-year-old drew this, but stick with me here. Then we pass the drawings to our model with a prompt and here's what you get. The quality of these images are insane and they can be made within seconds. You can also change how much you want the model to stick to your drawing. And I don't know why, but the more the model doesn't stick to my drawing, the better the images get. These are the results I got for Atlantis. I had to change the prompt a little bit, but once I did it, I got amazing results. You can get all the code I used to do this if you donate $5 to charity. I'm trying to raise $10,000 for the American Diabetes Association by the end of 2023. So donate $5 to get all the code and improve the lives of diabetic patients. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video.